So welcome everybody. We've got a 14, 15 people connected today. Uh, welcome to Tri Rods for August 2020. Uh, this is our second uh, at home <laughs> Tri Rods. Uh, we do, this is a quarterly meeting that we have um, four times a year. And we try to have uh, as many guests as possible come and talk about what they're working on in the IRODS community. Um, most of the talks have really actually been by the IRODS development team as we are moving forward with implementing new things. But uh, this time we're lucky enough to have uh, Il Young from, from Cyverse at Arizona. And he's going to talk about uh, some work that he actually mentioned in a lightning talk at the user group meeting in June. Uh, now we're a couple months later and he's He's actually released a thing. So uh, Il Young, please welcome. Um, talk about the IROD CSI driver. Thank you for the introduction. Um, hello, uh, I am Il Young. I am a graduate research assistant at Cybers and a PhD uh, candidate at the University of Arizona. Uh, my presentation for today is about IROD CSI driver that enables IROD access in a Kubernetes environment. Some of you may rem remember my UGM lightning talk that was about the CSI driver development plan. Uh, I planned to release the first version of the CSI driver in August, uh, and I released the first and second versions recently. So now it's 0.1.1 released. Um, the current version works very well, but it may have hidden bugs or undiscovered issues. So I need your participation to improve the software. So let's get started. Um, this presentation will cover following agenda. Uh, first, I will present a quick overview of container storage interface. Second, I will present how I wrote CSI drive works. And third, I will um, this will be the most important thing. Um, I will demonstrate how to install the driver and how to use it. Fourth, I will share the result of the performance evaluation. And fifth, I will share a configuration tip. And sixth, uh, I will uh, share the future development plan. A container technology such as Docker is widely used in computing environment these days. Um, in container environment, there are three different types of storage systems. Um, the first is containers private storage. Um, the storage belongs to a container and isolated from other containers. Um, this is what you typically use in containers. The second is host systems storage. Users can optionally mount host systems directly on containers. Um, this is often used to share data between containers on the same host. The third is network storage. Users, users can also mount network storage, such as network file system or IROS on containers. Um, this is often used to share data among uh, multiple containers on multi-host environment, such as in a Kubernetes cluster. In Kubernetes, there is a terminology called persistent volume. Persistent volume is used to store data uh, persistently as its name means. Persistent volume must be accessible from uh, uh, accessible uh, via file, file system mounts. We use persistent volume in Kubernetes for two reasons. The first reason is to protect data from failures. At host failures, data stored in containers private storage or uh, host system storage will be lost. On the other hand, persistent volume keeps data safely even in the failures. Uh, second, a persistent volume is used to share data between containers. This is useful in a workflow that con consists of many containers cooperate, co cooperate each other. 
persistent volume is typically implemented using network storage I mentioned of, uh, before. This is because network storage is independent from a Kubernetes cluster. So it keeps data securely when uh, Kubernetes hosts fail. Also, network storage can be accessed from multiple containers or hosts simultaneously. So network storage perfectly fits into this requirement of um, persistent volume. There are many persistent volumes supported in Kubernetes, such as NFS, as a file, or AWS EBS, or set of file system. And they are mostly network storage. Persistent volumes are implemented by um, persistent volume plugins. However, persistent volume plugins are tightly coupled to uh, Kubernetes source code, so it's very difficult to add custom plugins. Container storage interface, we call CSI, is a solution for this limitation. CSI is an interface to attach uh, persistent volume implementations dynamically. CSI is implemented as a persistent volume plugin, and CSI driver implements persistent volume. Um, this is a little confusing, but uh, CSI driver implements the CSI, the interface itself, and then provides persistent volume to users. So adding a support for a new storage is done by implementing a new CSI driver. Same as persistent volume plugin, CSI also uses file system mounts in Linux and Unix to access to um, persistent volume. CSI provides two different persistent volume provisioning modes. The first is static and the second is dynamic. To, under, to understand these modes, we first need to understand persistent volume objects and persistent volume claim objects in Kubernetes. Persistent volume objects define how persistent volumes look like. For example, a persistent volume Object, a persistent volume object defines which CSI driver will be used for the volume and how large it, the volume capacity is. Using this information, the CSI driver specified, uh, the, the CSI driver specified uh, creates a persistent volume. Persistent volume objects are typically defined by uh, Kubernetes admin. A persistent volume claim, uh, a persistent volume claim object is a request of a persistent volume access. Uh, persistent volume claim objects are defined by Kubernetes users. When a persistent volume claim object is defined by a Kubernetes user, uh, Kubernetes agent searches a matching. Uh, persistent volume and gives access to the persistent volume to the Kubernetes user. Uh, back to the um, volume provisioning modes. In static volume provisioning mode, uh, Kubernetes admins define persistent volumes statically and manually. On the other hand, in dynamic volume provisioning mode, CSI driver defines persistent volume dynamically. Um, the current version of IROD CSI driver only supports static volume provisioning. Um, dynamic volume provisioning mode will be supported in the next release. IROD CSI driver is 
package it in a Docker image. IROD CSI driver image contains all necessary softwares in it, such as the driver and IROD clients. IROD CSI driver will control IROD clients um, to provide IROD access. IROD CSI driver is then deployed in a Kubernetes cluster as a daemon set, which runs as a daemon on each Kubernetes node. IROD CSI driver receives volume mount request from Kubelet, um, which is a, a Kubernetes agent and mounts persistent volume on Kubernetes containers uh, via IROD clients. Because uh, all the driver and clients are packaged in a single uh, driver image, um, users don't need to um, manually install IROD clients in the Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. This figure shows CSI driver's volume mount process in more detail. Uh, first, a Kubernetes container requests a persistent volume to a Kubelet a Kubel, um, via persistent volume claim. Second, Kubelet finds persistent volume mapped and the storage class for the persistent volume and the finds CSI driver associated. Then requests the CSI driver for mounting the persistent volume. Third, CSI driver reads the configuration parameters in current, uh, persistent volume object and the mounts the IROD collection specified on a host file system using IROD clients such as IROD Fuse or DevFS2 or NFS client. Um, users can specify which IROD client in, uh, to, to use in persistent volume object. Um, lastly, the mounted IROD collection uh, on host file system is remounted on Kubernetes container who requested the volume initially. So to recap, uh, we need to create following Kubernetes objects to use IROD CSI driver in Kubernetes containers. Um, here uh, we see a pod that is, um, that is an abstraction of an app uh, an app is distributed as a pod in Kubernetes that consists of uh, one or multiple containers. In pod definition, we put which persistent volume claim um, to use, so it refers persistent volume claim object. Uh, persistent volume claim is created by Kubernetes users and uh, there are some fields that uh, points uh, what type of uh, persistent volume it needs. Um, using uh, storage capacity or uh, access modes and storage class name, it, uh, Kubernetes system finds uh, persistent volume that matches the best automatically. Um, Persistent volume has to be pre-created by uh, Kubernetes admin in static volume provisioning. And persistent volume defines which storage um, driver it will use to create persistent volume. And it has detailed information about the uh, configuration parameters for the driver. For example, in uh, IROD CSI driver, we have um, 
driver information. I mean, I wrote client information and um, connection uh, information and user account information here. And finally, a persistent volume referred storage class using this um, driver information. And then storage class is uh, associated with the um, CSI driver here in uh, provisional field. So we will see this in um, more detail um, soon in the demo. In IROD CSI driver, IROD connection and authentication information is configured in persistent volume object. Here are three examples of persistent volume objects uh, that use three different IRO clients. Since CSI relies on file system mount in Linux and Unix, only these, these three IRO clients that support file system mount can be used in the CSI driver. Persistent volume object specifies the capacity of the volume here uh, and the uh, access modes. Currently, uh, this one has read write many type. Uh, you can set read only, something like that. Um, and how to mount the volume. That this part. Um, to configure a persistent volume to use NFS client, set the driver field under CSI um, section to NFS. Then set host and pass um, field to the NFS server host name and pass to the IROD collection to mount. NFS client will use system authentication, so you don't need to pass username and password in this case. To configure a persistent volume to use IROD fuse, uh, set the driver field IROD fuse and set hosts port zone user and pass to the um, collection to mount. In the same way, uh, to configure a persistent volume to use web dev client, set the driver field web dev. In this case, CSI driver will use devfs2 as a client program. Then set URL uh, to the web dev service and username and password for authentication. From this configuration, um, IRO, the CSI driver, internally um, generates uh, following commands, uh, mount, Linux mount commands, and executes the mount. Passing username and password in clear text in persistent volume objects uh, can be insecure. So in this case, you can use Kubernetes secrets, which is supported by IRO, the CSI driver version 0 0.1.1. Um, we will see this one in our demo. Um, you can create um, Kubernetes secret objects first and then refer the object, I mean, the secret object in the persistent volume. So you don't have to um, uh, type uh, username and password in clear text in persistent volume object. And then you can create a uh, Kubernetes secret object uh, through a command line or from file. You can import the, the data from file or some other uh, storage mediums. So uh, if you are interested in using this um, technology, then uh, please check the Kubernetes documents for more detail. 
So, okay, um, now it's time to see how it actually works. Um, uh, I will show you um, the, the GitHub repository first. Here is the uh, Cyverse repository and um, there is the I wrote the CSI driver. Um, and um, in this demo, I will cover the, the readme uh, document that is in, uh, in the repository. And uh, the, the source code, the source tree consists of multiple uh, directories, but there is, uh, the important directories are uh, deploy that is, uh, that is used to um, deploy the, the CSI driver. And um, there is a directory, um, an example directory that contains a lot of, um, I mean, currently we have four, but I will add more. Um, so we will cover this um, example in this demo. And there's a, a package directory that contains all the source code in it. Uh, back to the terminal. Um, the left terminal is uh, to the uh, Kubernetes cluster and the right terminal is to the um, IROD server. So let's install the, um, the CSI driver first. I will mainly uh, copy paste the commands from the, um, the readme file. The installation is really easy. You can just copy, uh, copy paste this command that is a Kubernetes uh, control command, kub control, and then it reads the, the installation scripts from uh, GitHub repo directly. So you don't actually need to uh, get this source code uh, to install the driver itself. That is just one line command. Okay, it is created. And what it does is let me show you a little more detail about the installation. Um, let me see the, the configuration scripts. Um, it basically downloads image from Cybers, IRO, the CSI driver uh, image uh, that is already uploaded in uh, Docker Hub. And it also downloads some Kubernetes CSI driver images. Uh, and uh, there's another um, script here. So if you see this, that uh, defines how the, the container image will be deployed in Kubernetes environment. So it is deployed as a daemon set here, and it's a CSI, uh, I wrote CSI node uh, as a name, and uh, its namespace is a Kubernetes system. And yeah, it defines how driver will be installed in the Kubernetes cluster. And once the driver is installed, um, you can check um, if it runs uh, correctly by uh, typing uh, this command. And there are uh, four containers are running for the CSI driver. And one of them will be, um, this container is the one uh, I provided, I mean, this, this container is for a CSI driver itself, and the others are for um, 
other, uh, I mean, manager um, uh, programs that uh, controls the CSI driver. And then let's set up, um, uh, let's move to the next part. So we, we done the uh, install, installation of the driver here. And then the next step is defining a storage class and persistent volume. This should be done by uh, Kubernetes admin. Um, let's see how the, um, the script um, look like. Secret. So we will first install um, the set up the storage class first. That is very simple, just five lines. Um, just one line command to um, set up the uh, storage class. And the next. Uh, we will define a persistent volume that will use uh, I wrote the CSI driver. Uh, it is a read, read write many type. And if the volume, a persistent volume is uh, reclaimed, then we will retain the data, which means we will not remove the data. Uh, and then we will use this driver that is our I wrote the CSI driver. Uh, and then it will use I wrote the fuse and it will connect to um, this host and port and using this John and I will uh, mount my home directory that is, uh, there is nothing there currently. And then we will use uh, this uh, Kubernetes secret uh, for uh, authentication that contains my username and password for iRoad. So I already um, registered my iRoad fuse secret here. So this uh, persistent volume um, file refers uh, this secret. Um, now let's um, register this persistent volume. Okay, we're done. So um, we uh, created storage class object and created persistent volume object now. And now um, a new Kubernetes user uh, wants to use this uh, persistent volume by claiming, uh, by, by creating the persistent volume uh, claim object. Uh, let's see how the um, Persistent volume claim object look like first. It's very simple. Um, it requires read write many type of uh, persistent volume and storage class should be IROD uh, storage class that we just defined and then it will need uh, five gigabyte of storage capacity. So Kubernetes will automatically um, find uh, find the map matching uh, persistent volume um, that are uh, registered. So that must be um, the persistent volume we just we created just before because there is just one uh, persistent vo persistent volume there.
we created the object and then let's create um, a sample app. This is the, um, the sample app uh, we are going to run and its type is pod and um, it will create one container called the app and then the app will be um, uh, will uh, will execute um, in the um, the busy box um, Docker image that is just the empty image containing just um, just operating system um, and some um, I mean default uh, applications. So there's a no IRO related um, software installed in this image. And then we are going to execute this command, um, shell command uh, with these arguments, which will just uh, print out uh, some text and dates to a um, certain uh, file. And then in this part is important. Um, it will create an, this file under data directory and then the data directory is mounted using persistent storage that is um, that will be the um, they will use the, this IROD um, CSI driver. Uh, so this uh, persistent volume claim is what we created just before and then um, the persistent volume um, referred by this claim will be mounted uh, on this path and then we will create a file under this path so that means a file will be uh, sent to um, uh, sent to IRO the system uh, we mount So let's see, let's run this um, app. Okay, um, the app is created. So it's already done. So let's check if yes um, it created the file successfully and then let's see if the data is properly uh, correctly written yes um, it contains the um, data correctly and then yes yeah, csi driver works properly So back to the demo, uh, back, to, back to the slide. There are more examples in, uh, in the uh, repository. So please find more examples if you are interested. And then um, I performed uh, some evaluation of these three different iRoad clients that are used in iRoad CSI driver. Blue bars represent throughputs of NFS client. Red bars represent uh, throughputs of IROD fuse, and yellow bars represent uh, throughputs of web dev using DevFS2. I measured throughputs using IO John file system benchmark tool. IO John tests, tests uh, read, write, read, write. Uh, reread, random read, and random write. The ref, the left figure is performed with with uh, four kilobyte record size, and the right figure is performed with sixty four kilobyte record size. The results shows show that uh, web dev is uh, very performant. I will the fuse placed the second and NFS placed the last.
uh, and here I share a useful tip to configure iRoad CSI driver. Users can be confused um, which mount driver um, that is iRoad client uh, to use. Here are some comparisons between different iRoad uh, clients. Um, NFS shows uh, poor performance among the three clients, as we uh, saw just before. And it requires NFS roles installed to communicate to iRoad server. And it is insecure because uh, it uses system authentication. IROD Fuse showed moderate performance among the three, as we just saw in the uh, performance evaluation. Um, and it doesn't need to uh, install any server side uh, program because it can directly communicate to IROD server. Also, um, it supports data access via ticket. Uh, and it will support dynamic volume provisioning mode in the future release. Web dev showed the best performance, but it needs dev roles installed to communicate to iRoad server. Uh, Web dev supports anonymous access and HTTP caching. So uh, web dev is very good for uh, shared data sets. Uh, in general, IRO Fuse and web dev are recommended. Here's the um, development plan. Um, I just finished it, the development phase one. Um, in the phase one, three IROD clients are supported and static volume provisioning is supported. And IROD Fuse is also updated to support password authentication. Um, the development phase two is started a few days ago. Um, in this phase, I will add a support for dynamic volume provisioning. IROD Fuse will also um, will be updated to allow uh, proxy user access. The phase two will be finished in November. Uh, in the phase three, the CSI driver will be integrated to Cybers DE but the plan is not clear yet. This is because I, I will graduate in this December and I'm currently looking for a job. So uh, please contact me if you have a good position. Uh, thank you for watching my presentation. And do you have any questions about the CSI driver? Thank you, Young. That's great. Uh, I did not realize that you were graduating this December. That's, uh, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions myself. Does anyone have anything that they would like to either type in the chat or uh, unmute and ask Ilyung? Can you hear me? Corey, we are, we can, hear you, but you sound far, far away. Uh, okay. I guess I'll just type it. Okay. Uh, Jason has typed a question. It says, is there no interface into Kubernetes that does not require a mount point? Uh, as far as I know, there's no such interface uh, supporting um, just direct access to um, storage system without using uh, mount point. So the mount point 
uh, is the uh, only medium to access external uh, persistent volume. And, and the follow up to that is, you know, does that mean that all of those different, um, you know, persistent volume that exist already, they're all using mount points? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Corey is typing as fast as he can. Let's see. The uh, Corey's question is uh, what implementation of NFS rods did you use for the performance test? Do you know what version it was? Um, I think uh, Tony may, uh, let's see if Tony is there. Uh, Tony. Oh, Tony is there. Yeah, I'm here. Right. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you said server, didn't you, Ilian? So we, we don't know, Corey, um, but we might want to follow up and, and find out if uh, there's something that we can, that we can tweak. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexandru said, any plans, interest for a Helm chart rather than deploying the Kubernetes manifests directly? Uh, I don't know. I need to research. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that will be very hard, but, um, but I will need to um, investigate um, it wouldn't take that long. So yeah, if I can do it easily, then I will include in, I will include Helm chart for installation in next release. Yeah. And, and Alexander, if, if that's interesting to you, um, you know, absolutely reach out and share wisdom because I think we're, mm -hmm. we're all learning how all these things fit together, especially since we got some new parts here. Um, Corey says, I'm aware of two implementations of NFS rods. So yeah, the, so NFS rods has a history. Um, and then, you know, mm -hmm. we have recently written a uh, version four NFS V4 version of NFS rods that's using uh, uh, jargon, the Java client. So I would like to make sure that you were using the most recent one and not the one from, you know, three or four years ago, mm -hmm. but we can, we can follow up and make sure that's the case. Okay. Yeah, actually, I use the existing NFS uh, road system uh, installed in um, our Kubernetes environment. So, ah, so we don't know which one it is. Okay. I, I don't know. Uh, so that's why I uh, asked to Tony. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, Ines uh, Afghan says, on the performance testing, was this access to a single file or many different files? Uh, actually, the IO zone test uses just a single file. Uh, and then I also performed Bunny++ plus plus tests. Yeah. And then result was very similar to IO zone test. Oh, Bunny, okay. As you know, the Bunny++ plus plus tests uh, creates a lot of I mean, more than thousand files. Right. It shows the similar performance. Right, right. Yeah. Excellent. Do we have anything else? Oh, there's one more. Let's see. Edwin uh, at Cyverse says, question for everybody else. Are there others on the call that use Kubernetes today or have plans and could use the, could use the uh, CSI driver that Ilyung has already just demonstrated? Yeah, there are actually a couple people on here that I've, I don't recognize their names. So uh, that's good. So NIEHS says, yes, we could. And Alan, who works for IROD, says, we are looking for a Kubernetes tutorial. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, anybody who has wisdom, please share it. Uh, Alexander says that we're going to likely explore it for the Galaxy Kubernetes stack. So that's good. I know there's ongoing discussions with uh, with Galaxy, and uh, that's moving at whatever pace we can. Matthew Dunlop, who I don't think I've met, says we potentially could for us, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Correre at Odom, thought we were more interested in Dataverse at uh, Odom. But yeah, we've, we've integrated with Dataverse in the past. I don't know that any of that is through Kubernetes deployments. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'll get on. Uh, 
Currently, they're not, but well, Koray Ray is. Um, that's a new uh, project we're working on. Um, but uh, Dataverse, we're looking into the future for better ways to do deployments. So this is intriguing to us. Yeah. Yeah, this is new ground for us as well. So we, <laughs> we're all learning. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Uh, anybody else want to share something? And if not, we can all virtually clap for Ilyung. He can't hear us, but <laughs> we're all <laughs> clapping for you. Uh, thank you so much, Ilyung. Uh, this has been great, and we will uh, get this online pretty soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you.